to do salam, which are our slaughter. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy will be the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Well, we are in a season in this diocese, in a season of First Communions, you know. Uh, practically for two months, every weekend, I am taken by some parish uh, to share with them to celebrate the Holy Communion. And that really uh, triggers a very important question. Holy Communion, uh, sure, it's not subject for kids. It's a subject for life, and especially the more we mature, the more we have to understand what we are doing. And today is a great opportunity for all of us to exactly meditate on what is Holy Communion, which is not only like taking Communion separate from the rest of the ritual without which there is no Holy Communion. And the ritual, the whole Ras, the whole Kudasha, the whole Mass is not there, then there is no Holy Communion independent from consecration. It does not exist like that. Uh, and the whole thing is because the Lord wanted blessed, he broke, and he gave. So these four acts. He took, he blessed, for the chalice, he took and gave thanks. That is, there is an once there. One is over the bread, bless, over the wine over the cup of wine is he gave thanks. So we have blessing, we have glorification and thanksgiving. So he broke the bread and he gave. So there are four acts. That's what we'll explain. Going to Emmaus, see, that is the second part of the Mass, the Eucharistic part. The first part is taken from Jesus going with two of his disciples, I mean, he appeared to them, they were walking, going, they had given up, it was, it was Sunday, that now we call of resurrection for them, for them it, it, it was the Sunday of despair. I have given up. He has been crucified, their Lord is buried, everything is finished. Only that Sunday there was some rumors, some lady saying we have seen him, he's not there, the empty angels not seen. Angels told us he's alive. And the, the tomb is empty, so they were kind of curious rumors, but I mean, for them, looked like lady spoke at that time. Today, lady spoke is <laughs> much more taken seriously. <laughs> I, I guess so. <laughs> but uh, at that time, that's what they did in the gospel, huh? It's not my, my evaluation, it's in the gospel. Uh, so, there is some rumors, but uh, who knows, they are going back. While they are journeying to their village, Emmaus, 
Someone comes to them, what are you talking? And then, then this is what happened. That guest, that traveler, explained to them from Moses and the prophets all about the Messiah, how he had to go through all what you think it was not to go through. But if you examine the scriptures, you will see, he's telling them, one of them, Kaliopa, his name, is given his name, and Kaliopa later we know from historic books that he is known to be brother of Joseph, of Saint Joseph. Kaliopa. It is written in Eusebius, the first big historian of the church, that Kaliopa is the brother of Joseph. The betrothed of Mary. So, Kaliopa, let's say legally, Jesus' uncle, and we see his wife, Mary, is written in the Gospel, of Kaliopa by the side of Mary, the mother, virgin mother. So he and his wife were there. They felt strong for Jesus. So he was there in Jerusalem those, those days, critical days, that we call Holy Week. He was there. And his wife was there. And his wife stood by Mary, the Virgin Mother, in front of the cross. But he's crucified. He's buried. Very sadly. So he's returning to Emmaus, his village, his town. And Jesus comes and he begins from the prophets, from Moses and the prophets. He is talking to the disciples. The disciples are talking to him. So we have these kind of presentation for lectures. One Moses, one the prophets, one Shliha, the apostles, and one Evangelion, the gospel. And that is from where our liturgy takes the pattern, the model to follow. All of it as close as possible to what Jesus did. As close as possible to the scriptures, to Jesus himself. So I will go now step by step with you. Beginning with the curtain. See, our liturgy, the Chaldean liturgy, is without, I mean, you can examine it and you will conclude what I'm saying. It's really the, the closest to what Jesus did to what the apostles did. This closest to the scriptures. The most faithful, not only to the substance, absolutely all the liturgies are of the scriptures and of what Jesus wanted, but even to the, I would say, to the choreography of the apostolic time. As Jesus did, as Mary was there when this was done, as the apostles performed. Our liturgy, the Chaldean liturgy, is, if you look now for a model, 
as close as how Jesus did it with the apostles, come to the Chaldean church. You are born in it, so what a privilege. What a fortune. And we begin with this, that, for the West, may be a curious scene. Because our church is modeled primarily according to the temple of Jerusalem where Jesus said, destroy it and I will rebuild it. He did not say destroy it and throw it away and there will be no temple. No! I will rebuild it new fresh. So, the temple is renewed, is not thrown away. And at that temple, there was, there were two curtains. One for the priest to go behind and every day do their liturgy. There was bread on a table that had to be renewed. There were lamps to be also lit with oil poured on them so that they are day and night lit, and incense to be offered. And there was behind the first curtain a second curtain where only the high priest, only the pontiff, will go once a year and pass over to offer the blood of the Lamb of Passover. So there were curtains, and the curtain was one piece no opening in the middle. But if you read the Gospel, you will see that when Jesus died at the moment of his death, it is mentioned that the curtain of the temple was divided in the middle, was cut in the middle from top to bottom. The curtain was not eliminated. It was cut open. What is the meaning of the curtain and what is the meaning of being open? See, today, I mean, we are so much, we we are so arrogant, humans. Even God, we reduce, in our arrogance, we reduce God to our own style, to our own habits, to our own architecture, to our own custom. Instead of accepting the grace of God to be elevated to Him, reaching God is not by reducing Him to our size or to our manners, it is by elevating ourselves, not by our force, we cannot do it, by accepting the grace of God to be elevated. So, go anywhere you like, any respectable office, and say, tell, I want to see the doctor. They will tell you, what's your name? Take a number, sit down there. I want to see a lawyer. Now you have an appointment, sit there. Hey, but we presume 
that God. I go and say, hi, Jesus, and he's there waiting for me. He's waiting for you. Provided that you do to him what is due to him. He loves you. He loves me. He loves each one of you. Each one of us. But it is incumbent on us. It's our duty to give him what is due to the king of kings. And this curtain tells you, hey, come sit down and ask for audience with the king of kings. Ask for audience because it is a grace to be given to you. It's not something that you deserve by your own strength. You are made to deserve it by His grace. Not because of what you merit by your own strength and, and, and rights. This is a grace. This is a gift. So ask for an audience. And that's what, what we come first. And we say, I stand there glorifying God, telling Him how gorgeous you are. I want to see you. Please accept. If you don't have that, I don't say that anyone else is doing intentionally something, but I'm saying what the act itself means. With this gifts, value, meaning, leverage, weight to the king. Because I come here and say, please accept me. So, and I sing his glories from the beginning. And I tell him, you are my savior. The minute I tell him my savior, La khumarat kulla mawdeenat, taluk, oh Lord of all, I, I recognize you are the one who will, who will raise my body and you are the savior of my soul. You are my total, my whole being, savior, soul, and body. I recognize you that and now the audience is given. Welcome. And the king has said, I'm ready to receive you. See, this act shows that elevation of the king, lofty status, and my, my lower status, and me wanting to accept the grace of God and be elevated to him. Without this act, without this character, that is for God, and that is not, not articulate. Here, this is articulated. It is enhanced. It is shown tangibly. See, Jesus has an open sight. See, this is audience given. The king is ready to accept you. See, read, read, this is 
very similar to what is in the body. Because Jesus said that the temple is his body. That the body is, is the temple, the new temple. So you, you can see what happened to his body, because that's the temple, the new temple. His side is open, as John witnessed and is in the gospel. It is similar to the curtain. See, Thomas and he is our apostle, the apostle of our church and of our forefathers. His sight has been opened. And this is exactly what happens. The curtain opens the body of the Lord to us. Come inside of me. Thomas, where is your hand? Give me your hand. I want you to go inside of me, to touch me, so that you know how much love I have for you. Come inside. Come inside. And when the clergy goes inside, is really everyone going with them. They are a continuity of wave, a chain. Everyone cannot go. So those who will go will represent the rest. But everyone spiritually is coming, is entering his heart. See, the heart was closed. The body is closed. Then God opened. You see the difference? You, it has to be closed. And then be opened. Because that is what gives the depth of meaning. very close to him. And even if you are sitting there, and wherever you are sitting, the body of the church is one part of it, one member of it, those members are coming here in connection with everyone there. And you see, for the, the readings are made exactly as he taught us. Moses, Torah, from those books, and then the prophets, you see. The first reading, two readings, are that side and this side, the last two readings. Because he is the measurement of protocol. And his right hand is the, in protocol, in formality, the whole church is holy, everything in the church is everywhere, every side is absolutely holy. But as protocol, his right hand, because, you know, when he said, oh, that day when the judgment will come and he will say that, he will say, those chosen come to my right and those, so the right is the chosen. Whose right? His. His right. 
Imagine if the body, the icon of the body is not there. How important it is. Because the cross is only wood. It's the instrument of our salvation, but not the Savior. The Savior is He. And the icon of He, of the Lord, is that what is representing Him. And as much possible human figures and human expression and possible expression today for us. So that's why we don't call it, this is not a statue. This is not the accurate name for it. It's Iken. Yokna. Yokna is the representation of someone holy or some uh, event that's holy. This is Yokna, Ayquna. It is not statue, it's not picture. These are worldly terms, but technically, with, with theological significance, is Yokna, is Icon. So the icon of the Lord is exactly representing him. It is not a decoration. It is representation. Because there was a historic event. The crucifixion. The cross is not a decoration is the instrument on which the Lord, sometimes we have decorative process, that is different function, but in church, is not a decoration on the altar, because here we present korbana, which is exactly renewing that event that happened. So that's why the right side of the icon of the Lord is where the Shliha, the letters of the Apostles and the Gospel is read because in protocols of the Church, the right hand is where we have the privileged son. So this is how it is done. In preparation of the Qurban. See, Qurban the only mediator between heaven and full mediator other mediators are toward the mediator, like Virgin Mary, she is very close to the Lord. Other saints, the apostles, they join the mediator, who is Christ of all grace. They are, they bring us close to Him, but the mediation between heaven and earth between God the Father and humanity, the mediator, the, the one, the principle, the main, is the Lord himself. And our sacrifice is exactly in his hands. We have to give it, and our liturgy say, Bukdan of Maran Christ, who has been sacrificed for our salvation, who accept this, if you read, if you follow the text of the Mass, who he let him accept this sacrifice from our hands in his grace and mercy. So he accept our sacrifice and he presented to God. 
So he took breath. So that is what our liturgy will do exactly. We'll come, Shemash, and the first communion, those Talmidim will be those blessed kids. We'll bring Luchma of Hamra, bread and cup of wine, and the priest will take them and exactly present them and see what's going to happen. Our liturgy, unique. Formidable, formidable, and faithfulness to the Lord, and an expression, an expression that is really dramatic. See, where is the blood? Where is the open side? Is that side? So our liturgy. This is what our liturgy will do. Will bring. Bread and wine. And the wine, the cup, must be in our liturgy. Must be that side. Because it's parallel and continuity with the sight of the Lord, with the blood. So the priest will take them like that. Because that is where where the blood is and the icon of the Lord in his body on the cross. That's where it was. But then he will the priest will return to present them. But now the cup is this side, not anymore. In continuity. Our liturgy will not, will not be inconsistent. So what the priest will do? In your name, inviting all of you to be, he will become cross. The priest. He will do like this. So that the cup is in line with the wounded body. So that he is across. You learn how to be across. It's formidable. It's unique. And this is how the elements, the offerings are presented. Again, cross. What the Lord said. When you offer Qurban, your Qurban, and you remember there's something wrong between you and some of your friends, stop! Go first, reconcile, and then come, continue your Qurban, your offering. Our liturgy stops exactly that, exactly there. There, you present it, okay. You have to agree with the community of faith and with and faith and charity and love. And that is why you will go and say, Hang me now, we believe, so we agree in faith. But then we have to give the peace, reconcile in charity and love with everyone. So, you see, every liturgy is respected and it has its own genius and it is gorgeous. 
But I'm telling you why we do what we do, Chaldeans. We do it because the Lord told us to do it so. And we do it perfectly as much as we can. As the Lord told us. When you offer, stop. You remember you have some? You go there. That's the reason why we have the peace there. Not at the end. I respect every liturgy. It's gorgeous. But I'm telling you why ours is organized this way. Because the Lord said it. When you are offering and you remember something between you and, 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 and your neighbor, go first reconcile, then come and continue. So we stop and reconcile. And when we give peace, we don't come and say, hey, how are you? Ciao. <laughs> That's so okay, it's accepted. Everyone knows what they do. Bless it, bless it. But I tell you what the Lord said. I give you my peace, not like the world. And we are so, so sensitive to what Jesus says. Not like the world. So I don't do it like the world. <laughs> All of me. All of me. Not one hand. All my person. Genuinely. I am in peace. With everyone. Two. Coming. Deep. In each other. To my heart. To my, to the core of my being. Not like that is valid for everyone. God goes to the intention and to the heart. But I am telling you why we do it this way. Because he said, not like the world. So I don't do it like I'm doing it in the market. I do it church way. Because Jesus said so. This, the meaning of this salute is much deeper than the meaning of, hey, how are you? Good morning. Ciao. The, the meaning is much deeper. And I show that kind of meaning through my chest. So we go afterward exactly to what well, Jesus said. He took bread. Blessed, he took the cup, gave thanks, and said at the end, do this in memory of me. Three acts, three sections that Jesus did. One is glorification, he blessed. One is thanksgiving. The third is memory. And that is the reason why we have three sections in the consecration, the priest say, Glory to you, Father, Son, who, what? Two things. Because you created the world and you redeemed mankind. The two main reasons for why I stand in front of God, glorifying Him and then thanking Him. You created me, you redeemed me. Well, the first one is glorification. Exactly like the Lord did. As much as we can come close to Him and do it like Him. And then, we thank you. Because you opened my eyes, you, for, you have forgiven my sins, you raised me from my death, and so on. Thank him, and at the end, do this and do the, in memory, in memory, in memory of me. So now I remember the whole church, and then remember him, how he did. the last summer. 
And at the end, who is going to cons who is going to consecrate? Who is going to change this bread and wine into body and love? What power? At the end, that's what we say bluntly. It is the it's not only that spot, but it is like the peak of the whole prayer of consecration. Your Holy Spirit come. Holy Spirit come. Who is going to affect that change? That transformation? The Holy Spirit. Jesus comes. Jesus comes to us the way he came to Mary. How Mary received Jesus. How is this going to be? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, in you. This is how the church is Mary. This is exactly the climax, the peak of the consecration. May the Holy Spirit come, O Lord, and rest upon this oblation of your servants. Sanctify it. You see how our liturgy, how it follows exactly the scriptures. And then he broke. See, our liturgy gives that breaking. No, I'm not going to call it breaking. Sigh. Because break, break, if you break, it is destroyed. If you break something, it is destroyed. So the term does not really give the best meaning. And is when you take a hole and make it segment. But each segment containing the whole. So that is very sophisticated concept. That you make segments, each segment containing the whole. Because if you break, no, one piece is here, one piece is there, and it's destroyed. So it's not a good term to, 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 to express what's happening. But the Chaldean term is classic just goes to the to what the Lord did. So we do it. And that's the reason why, because it is broken for you. And that's why the priest, the celebrant must do it in front of you. Not everything. I have to talk to him, to him. I cannot say Maria Allah you are not, Maria Allah, no, you are not. <laughs> Our Father, <laughs> you are not. And they say, oh, he's there, I know he's there, he's there. But why incarnation is there? Why Jesus said to Philip, Philip, how do you, how do you say, show me the Father? Don't you know that? If you look at my face, you have seen the Father. Look at my face. That is how you see the Father. And no one can come to the Father but through me. And that's the reason why. I don't see it. I have. I mean, God looks at the intentions and I don't have. <laughs> at all any any intention to judge anybody's intention that is not my business but I tell you why we do what we do why because I look at him his face is the face of the father and through him not in the ambiguity 
and the cloud through him as I can, I reach. Because he told me so, I reach to the Father. Because he told me so. Let me say to our Father, exactly looking at him. Why the fraction, the breaking, is done because it's, and there is no prayer there, you know. Our liturgy made it so that is only expressive of, of this making fragments of the one body that are available for me. And then we take communion. And you see, we bring this linen. This is the right way in our liturgy. Not this plate. It's, as I said, I judge nobody. Well, I tell you what, we bring the linen. Because that linen, you cannot come here, all of you, but this, 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 not a plate, this, the banquet will come to you. And because the linen, tells us about the empty tomb where the body is alive, is here. You are taking it. Do you see the beauty, the depth, the meaning? So the banquet of the Lord comes to you. The linen Reminding you that the tomb was empty because the body is not only alive, is in glory. It's a glorious body that you are receiving. Well, I, I love your love for the liturgy and how much you brought into our church. I, it's just fabulous. Um, one of the questions I have. Um, I know for the West, their early writings was from Justin Martyr, especially 150 AD, something like that, where the Mass was depicted and how they followed it in so many ways. You talked about Eusebius. Is that who we look at as our early? No, Eusebius, no. He's only a historian. So he's a historian. Not a liturgy. I, I, I spoke about Eusebius for, for Calliope, because he is the one who mentioned uh, Cleopas. that Calliope. He is quoting someone of the second century. You see, this is he wrote beginning of end of the third, beginning of the fourth, mostly beginning of the fourth century. But he is quoting here in this issue someone of the second century, early second century. So, and he is saying that uh, Calliope is, so, is, is the brother of Joseph. I see. So I I, I mentioned. Eusebius for that purpose, because okay. he's the reference for, how do we know that Paleopoma is not some, no, there's a historian mentioning that, quoting someone of the second century who was, who was a converted Jew, who was a Jew then became a Christian. So it, it is just to, to, to bring evidence, it's not to, about liturgy. Liturgy, our liturgy goes exactly to the apostle Tadeus, Tadeus. Oh, Thaddeus. Thaddeus. Ad day is Tadeus. But Judas Tadeus. They pronounce it like that here. But Shimmeile Tadeus. And popularly we say Ad day. Ted day becomes Ad day. Oh. Yeah. So he's one of the apostles. So one of the twelve. So yeah. he is our liturgy. Really, I have shown that it comes. It is somehow, uh, I, I mean, there is some growth in it yeah. from inside, but not alteration. There is some, some uh, and I showed the first stat, stat, status of it at this time and how it developed a little bit through centuries until now as it is. So it is the only liturgy that in continuous use since the time of the apostles. Other liturgies are, the most ancient is uh, called Hippolytus of, uh, of the Latin liturgy. It is 
practically from the third century. Uh, but the original apostolic uh, uh, liturgies are, are lost, I mean, as, as, as text, specific text. And other liturgies are composed following those, but those apostolic liturgies are not available anymore in front of us. There are other liturgies composed, like in Greek, and Latin, and Armenian, and, and other languages. The Mass, the consecration of Adde and Mari, is in continuity of the original text of the Apostle Tejis. And is Michigan and other areas are a following of the same? Because I know yeah, it is the same liturgy, but I enhance it to the original status. Okay. I brought it to the original status. Okay. So I made a study on that, and it is recognized as, mm -hmm. as a reference for scholars. So it is more in the closest to the original status of the apostolic time. But the others, all Chaldean masses, are in continuity with that liturgy. But only the, 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 the text that we are using here, it's slightly, I would say, brought to or the closest possible original status. Mm -hmm. But it is very, absolutely, very much similar. Yeah. Uh, and the same, I mean, it is all based on that mm -hmm. Adde and Mari liturgy. And Adde, means Pelius, means Chad Dile Libya Puyo, his strong heart, strong chest. Mm -hmm. That is the meaning of the Pelius. That's very fascinating personality. Ktoya, uh, like that, Makino Khandilla, exactly. Pelius uh, is very, very one of the most fascinating. Apostles, and it is again our apostle. Thomas is very fascinating. He's the one who reached the heart. The only one, only human being. In the name of all of us. Inside the heart of Jesus. What a courage, what audacity. And Jesus did not disappoint him. Okay, bring your head. Bring, bring, metida, metida, brida. That is Thomas. And he's the first one who said, My Lord and my God, the greatest, the most concise, the most brilliant, the most divine, sublime expression of faith, my Lord and my God, is the one who said it. Thomas, Tavis is the one. We took the, the linen and brought it to Abgar, the king in Edessa. And that today, I believe, personally, I believe, it was the same, the shroud of Turin. It is where he brought it so. And it is the only liturgy that speaks about the linen as actually the witness of the resurrection. The only liturgy, our liturgy. And the Yom Bita Pianta. Come Zamari, the Shamash Akha. Hakatana, the quarter three. Aha, Tawa, Sad, the Pianta Lama, Wame. The only liturgy that says that the linen are the witness of resurrection. Qurah, the shroud, is the only liturgy that preserves that awareness and that memory. And that is what you receive here when you take communion. It is brought to you, in front of you. The tomb is empty. He is risen, and as risen is coming. Just looking at the limit, you connect with that reality. A 
It's unique. A plate cannot give you that, cannot suggest that, cannot conduct you that. So it's not a matter of dariyat al-sahda. There is more than practical purpose. There is a, a theological connection, dogmatic connection, historic connection, faith connection. Okay, as easy. Let's go more about it. One more blessing. One more blessing, please, for us. The blessing of our Lord. Risen. Risen. Alive among us. Be on your person, on your hearts, on your families, on your home. Wherever you walk, be aware that the Lord is inside of you. You carry him the way Mother Mary carried him physically in person, but we carry him spiritually in faith and in the Eucharist also. And that is as much as any human being can reach to heaven. That heaven may the Lord grant it you in your heart, in your house, in your neighborhoods, and wherever you go. And may the holy angels be around you, supporting you, protecting you, and making you always happy and sorry. Bob wrote, Bob, 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 Bob,